it's it these this is something that I kind of use here and there but it's very very beneficial if you're able to use these words in your everyday life because it makes it more familiar to you so when you see it you're not gonna be like what is this animoly anomaly what is that right so make sure you do that okay second word equivocal not easily understood or explained. Politicians have been known to provide equivocal answers to reporters' questions. Third word is lucid. Adjective, again, very clear and easy to understand. The lecture was lucid and straightforward, allowing the students to fully grasp the concepts presented. Now, I've never used lucid in this term. I mean, when I'm talking about lucid, I usually use it in terms of like water um, or uh, in terms of a particular, um, you know, test that we're doing in chemistry and be like, oh, was it lucid? Um, so I, it's, I talk about it in that terms. And if you are sciencey like me, that may be a term that you've heard before or a term that you've used. But if you're not, again, use these terms um, just kind of in your everyday life. So like the water was lucid. It wasn't brackish, I guess is what you can say, which means kind of like mucky precipitate this is a verb to cause something to happen quickly or suddenly unforeseen costs can precipitate a budget crisis yes it can <laughs> assuage this is a verb to make an unpleasant feeling less intense which is good a massage can assuage the soreness in your muscles and i use this a lot actually um just kind of talking about oh let's just assuage this situation all right, <laughs> erudite, adjective, having or showing great knowledge. High school students often struggle with novels that are more erudite than they are entertaining. I mean, I think that's anyone. I mean, we all wanna be entertained, so we're obviously gonna have a little bit of a struggle. Opaque, so you can use opaque and lucid because let's listen to the definition of opaque not able to see through, not easily understood. Medical jargon includes many opaque terms like macrosomic, which describes a newborn who weighs more than 4,000 grams. Now again, so like I've never used opaque in terms of, hey, like this was not easily understood. I've never used it in that manner. I've used it more so in the not able to see through. So it wasn't lucid, it was opaque, or it wasn't opaque, it was lucid, right? So that's kind of how I use it. But understanding that it has more than one definition is what is going to be key for you acing a jury because sometimes they might not use it in terms of being able to see through. It it's just more so that they might use it like, oh, this is not easily understood. And then you have to pick the one that kind of best shows that. So if you didn't realize that opaque also means not easily, um, also means not easily understood, then you can be like, oh, okay, well, if something is like not easy to see through, I guess kind of sort of could be not easily understood. So that could be opaque, right? So you kind of have to like work it out, but this is how you have to approach the verbal section in the GRE, okay? Prodigal, adjective, wasteful or extravagant. Now, if you're a Christian or if you've read the Bible, you know about the prodigal son. What did he do? He went to his dad, he asked him for some money. He said, give me my money, I wanna go, I'm tired of working for you. And then he went and he spent all of that money. And then he was like, what? Like my father has all of this money and he has really good servants in his house that eat well and I'm eating with the pigs, let me go back to my dad's house. And he was the prodigal son. He was extravagant and wasteful. And that is what this definition is also talking about. The prodigal prince bought lavish gifts and planned expensive events. Remember that story about the prodigal son. I promise you, you will understand it when you see it on the test. Okay, enigma. It's a noun. A person or a thing that is mysterious, puzzling, or difficult to understand. Which is, this is really cool, you guys, because when I was studying for the GRE, I used this word a lot. When I 
originally met my now husband who was just kind of like some guy that I was talking to at the time because he was an enigma I'd call him I'd be like man you're an, an enigma because you know you're like not really something that I understand because you're not like the other guys that I used to be with and so that was my thing and that's what this is talking about. It says scientists continue to research cancer to solve the enigma of its primary cause, which will hopefully lead to a cure. So again, make it true to you. Make it like something that you can easily understand or relate to because that's what's going to be able to stick with you. So when you see it on GRE Day, you're not going to be like blown away and you're going to do really well. Fervid, intensely enthusiastic or passionate. The child showed a fervid fascination for superheroes pouring over comic books for hours. Um, again, this is the church girl in me coming out. Like there was I think your other always talking about like a fervid prayer. So um, that's kind of like how I remembered that word. Placate. This is my word, y'all. I use this word all the time. I promise you. Like Ask my friends, I use this, okay? It says, to make someone less angry or hostile. Now, um, it says a parent may decide to placate a baby with a pacifier. I use this, I'll be like, all right, let's just kind of placate this situation, all right? Like, you know, let's kind of like make it less hostile. And I use that a lot when I'm trying to like, let's just calm down everybody, let's just talk about it. That's the, uh, the Adana slash social worker slash psychiatrist, uh, Tris, psychologist in me, um, you know, in a past life coming out. But that's, that is my word. I love it. I use it all the time. I have a zeal for it. Zeal is our 12th word. It says a strong feeling of intent a strong feeling of interest and enthusiasm that makes someone very eager or determined to do something. The great emperor's crusading zeal led him to conquer many lands. Um, and yeah, so like if you have a zeal to ace your GRE, go ahead and continue to look at this video and see the top 52 words. Abstain, to restrain oneself for doing or enjoying, so that's supposed to be from, to restrain oneself from doing or enjoying something. Doctors encourage their patients to abstain from smoking cigarettes. And again, the church girl in me, you know, you're supposed to abstain from any sexual intercourse before marriage. <laughs> so that's how I remember that. Okay, audacious, right? A willingness to take bold risk, showing a lack of respect. Um, the new CEO pers pursued audacious in initiatives to save the company from bankruptcy. The student's audacious remark earned her a seat in, in, after in afternoon detention. All right, yeah, so you, audacious, obviously, um, you know, it's also, you, it's, I don't know, like, it's kind of like, it's related to like the audacity of you. Like how audacious are you? Or the audacity of you to actually think that you can talk to me like that? No, that's not happening. And so again, like uh, use it in real life. Like use that to somebody that's trying to hate on you. Look, like you have some audacity, like to really think that you can come up in here and talk to me like that? No, wow, how audacious. There you go. Desiccate. Remove the moisture from something. Um, again, if you are into sciences, you know this, uh, this word a lot. The heat and energy from the sun can desiccate even the most hardy plants. Um, gullible. Easily persuaded to believe something. I think this is a word that most people understand or, or you know, have heard sometime before. But if you haven't, this word means the gullible little boy gave his older sister all of his allowances because she told him she would buy a pony for him. Yes, that was very gullible. I love this word, um, laudable, right? Deserving praise and commendation. Providing affordable health care for all citizens is a laudable goal. Or if you are like into basketball, like I kind of am, <laughs> you know, when basketball season rolls around, be like, yo, did you see LeBron last night? That performance was laudable, <laughs> right? So again, just use, finding ways to use these words is very important. Pedant, a person 
who makes an excessive display of learning. Professor Blackwell, a well-known pedant, required his pre-med students to speak in Latin throughout the entire semester. That is crazy. I mean, I hope y'all was okay. <laughs> Just like if this was real, you know, like that's a lie. Like, man, vacillates. So to waver between different opinions or actions. And it kind of sounds like that or vacillate, right? You're like vacillating or however you want to say it um, or that's depending on you. But if you're vacillating between two points, that kind of makes sense.